Unit 12. Tape Script 12.1. The Marriage Proposal. Moira. Hello there. How are you? John. I'm just fine, thanks. <laughs> it's really great to see you again. We haven't seen each other since our trip to Paris. Oh, John. I loved every minute in Paris. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Can we go back there next spring? Moira. Uh, first... There's something I want to ask you, something I have to ask you. Moira, I love you so much. Will you marry me and come to Paris with me on honeymoon? John, yes, I will. I love you too. Tape script 12.2. The Wedding. One. How do you know John and Moira? I went to the same school as Moira. Two. Are you married? Yes, I am. That's my husband over there. Three. Where did you meet your husband? Actually, I met him at a wedding. Four. Have you travelled far to get here? Yes, we have. We flew in from Dublin yesterday. Five. Do you live in Dublin? Yes, we do. Six. So, where are you staying? We're staying at the Four Seasons Hotel. Seven. So am I. Can we meet there later for a drink? Sure. I'll introduce you to my husband. Tape script 12.3. I just met this really nice guy called Adam. Oh, yeah? He was very friendly. Do you know what he said? First, he asked me how I knew John and Moira... I told him that I'd gone to the same school as Moira, and then he asked if I was married. Of course, I said that I was. He asked you that? And next he asked where we'd met, and I told him that we'd actually met at a wedding. You told him that? Sure. Then he wanted to know how long we'd been here, and I said we had just got here yesterday, and that we'd flown in from Dublin. He asked if we lived in Dublin, so I told him that we did. What else did this guy want to know? Well, he asked where we were staying, and it turns out that he's staying at the Four Seasons too. Then he asked if I could meet him later for a drink, and I said we could, and that I would introduce him to you. I'm not sure I want to meet this guy. Tape script 12.4 1. Adam lives in Birmingham. He told me he lived in Cambridge. 2. He doesn't like his new job. He told me he loved it. Three. He's moving to Manchester. Hang on. He told me he was moving to Australia. Four. He went to Brighton on his last holiday. Strange. He told me he'd been to Florida. Five. He'll be 40 next week. Really? He told me he'd be 30. Six. He's been married three times. But he told me he'd never been married. You see, I told you he was a liar. Tape script 12.5. One. The postman told me to sign on the dotted line. Two. Maria asked Mark to translate a sentence for her. Three. Mary reminded her son to send Aunt Judy a birthday card. 4. John begged Moira to marry him. 5. John invited his boss to his wedding. 6. Tommy refused to go to bed. 7. Ben advised Tim to talk to his solicitor. 8. The teacher ordered Joanna to take the chewing gum out of her mouth. Tape script 12.6. Kathleen Brady. OK, we argue sometimes, but not that often. Usually we just sit quietly and watch TV in the evenings. But sometimes, sometimes we argue about money. We don't have much, so I get very upset when Kenny spends the little we have on drinking or gambling. He promised to stop drinking, but he hasn't stopped. It's worse since he lost his job. OK, we were shouting. 
But we didn't throw a chair at Mr. West. It, um, it just fell out of the window. And I'm really sorry that we woke the baby. We won't do it again. We love children. We'll babysit for Mr. and Mrs. West any time if they want to go out. Tape script 12.7 Anne West Every night it's the same thing. They argue all the time and we can hear every word they say. During the day it's not so bad because they're both out, but in the evenings it's terrible. Usually they start arguing about which TV show to watch. Then he slams the door and goes down the street to the pub. Last night, he came back really drunk. He was shouting outside his front door. Open the door, you... so-and-so. Well, I won't tell you the language he used, but she wouldn't open it. She opened a window instead and threw a plant at him. Tonight, they threw a chair at my poor husband. They are so selfish. They don't care about our baby one bit. Tape script 12.8 A birth Well... My sister was expecting her first child, and uh, she was living on a Scottish isle, the island of Mull, just off the west coast, and uh, the plan was that she would uh, travel to a friend's house on the mainland, uh, there's a ferry of course, uh, a week before the baby was due. That was the plan, but uh, of course babies don't always... <laughs> And uh, anyway, two weeks before the baby was due, she was at home and the baby started coming early. So my sister had to be taken off the island by lifeboat, not by ferry. You see, it was really early in the morning and the ferry hadn't started running. Um, but even the lifeboat didn't make it in time to actually get her to the mainland. Uh, you can imagine, it's quite a small space to give birth in. As she said, it was kind of like lying in the aisle of an aeroplane or something. That's about all the space that you've got. Fortunately, the lifeboat crew were marvellous. Uh, they're nearly all volunteers who, who man the lifeboats. You have, like, the captain of the boat and four crew members... And, uh, in this case, a midwife from the hospital and another midwife who was just passing, just on her way home, in fact. So, in this small space, there were all these people standing around as she was giving birth. Oh, and, of course, her husband, Nick, was there, too. So, it was quite crowded. Um... Uh, my sister was just pleased that there were no complications and that she managed to get through it. And what was really nice, on the lifeboat, um, the crew had a bottle of champagne, which I think they were saving for a special occasion. And they did actually open it and uh, drink the health of the new baby. <laughs> and then they also engraved her name and date of birth on the lifeboat's bell so that it's always remembered. The lifeboat men were encouraging my sister to name the baby after the lifeboat because <laughs> lifeboats always have a name. And this one was called Maura Edith MacDonald. And so they wanted my sister to call the baby Maura. But she'd already got a name planned. But she did use Maura as a middle name. So my niece has the name Hazel Beth Maura Banner. Uh, she has two middle names. <laughs> One of the lifeboat men joked. He said it was a good job she didn't give birth on the ferry because she'd have had to call the baby Caledonian McBrain. <laughs> That's the name of the ferry company. Actually, the story... Um, it, it was featured in the local newspapers after the birth. Um, so there was a photo. Somebody had a camera on the boat and took photos straight away. So the story appeared with that photo in all the local papers. Tape script 12.9 Funeral Blues Stop all the clocks. Cut off the telephone. Prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone. Silence the pianos, and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin. Let the mourners come. 
Let aeroplanes circle, moaning overhead, scribbling on the sky the message, He is dead. Put crepe bows round the white necks of the public doves. Let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. He was my north, my south, my east and west, my working week and my Sunday rest, my noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. The stars are not wanted now. Put out every one, pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. For nothing now can ever come to any good. Tape script 12.11. Listen and check. One. Excuse me. Can you tell me where the post office is? I'm sorry. I'm a stranger here myself. Two. Ouch! That's my foot. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking where I was going. Three. Excuse me, what's that creature called? It's a diplodocus. Pardon? A diplodocus. D-I-P-L-O-D-O-C-U-S. Thank you very much. Four. I failed my driving test for the sixth time. I'm so sorry. Five. Excuse me, we need to get past. My little boy isn't feeling well. Six. Do you want your hearing aid, Grandma? Pardon? I said, do you want your hearing aid? What? Do you want your hearing aid? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I need my hearing aid. <laughs>